Hey guys, so we're gonna go over the basics of optimizing a LinkedIn ad campaign. So there's gonna be two different layers that we look at and we optimize differently. The first layer is the cold audience. So cold just means you're putting ads in front of people that have never heard of you, never seen you, never been to your website. So in marketing or in sales, we call them like a cold lead or a cold audience. Now, once they actually go to the website, they start taking actions that show intent or interest, we classify them as kind of warming up. So I, I said cold ads the other day to someone and they just looked at me like I was crazy. And I realized that I'm starting with some basic assumptions that I probably shouldn't, depending on my audience. And this is going to go in the LinkedIn ads basics course. Uh, so I want to make sure that I don't start with uh, too many assumptions if possible. So on the cold layer, your only objective is to send traffic to the website and to send it as to, if, if you're putting your ads in front of a targeted group, then the only thing that matters is how much traffic can you get for the lowest cost possible. And I have an ad, I have a, another video that goes over the basics retargeting strategy. And so that would be kind of similar where I stressed that the only point of cold ads is to just get the digital hand raisers showing interest, clicking into your website, and that it's the retargeting layer's job to then get conversions, build trust and credibility. Sure, some conversions might happen from their first visit to the website, but most B2B buyers are not impulse shopping on $5,000 uh, SaaS products or services. So you're gonna optimize those slightly different. So on the cold ad, and let me just, let's do, this one's been going since September. We had to redo or rebuild our ad account. So I have this campaign here and I'm going to, yeah. So we have various spend across all these different ads. I'm gonna sort it. And these are all just ad creatives inside of a campaign. So the first thing that I care about is for cold is getting the lowest cost per click. And usually the lowest cost per click is also um, the highest click through rate. Let me change it to my custom built dashboard here. Yeah, I'm pretty fancy guys. There's a video that goes over that if you're really curious, but suffice it to say it's fancy. Um, so here I have, it's really not that fancy. I sorted it by cost per click. And so some of these actually had spend not that much, but didn't even have any clicks. So they weren't able to even rank on there. And then I have starting with this one, the lowest cost per click. Oh, it's actually these. Hmm, I'm making myself. Ah, they had they had small they had small sample size, uh, but this one it has been my strongest. And these are all pretty close. They're two something. They're within change. And probably this one had lower cost per click when I decided to cut those other ones out and and lead with this one. So the two things you wanna you wanna look at here is your frequency, this is the average amount of ads that the prospect, the average prospect sees from this campaign. So the average prospect is only going to see two ads from this campaign because this is a cold ad campaign that's going out to a pretty broad audience. This one has about six or 700,000 people in it. So it's constantly sorting and searching for the active users who are most likely to click and putting those in front of them. And it's not putting a, ads in front of the same people a ton of times. So the, the purpose of optimizing this cold campaign when your frequency is that low is to get down to the top two ads or even the top one ad if you want, because there's no point in running 12 different creatives. If the average prospect is only seeing two ads, you might as well boil it down to your top two ads. Sure. You can start with more so you can A, B, C test, you know, different intros and images, but you should try to boil it down quickly or as quickly as possible to your top one or two performing. And the reason I say that you actually want to boil it down to one or two and not just keep cycling out new ones is because over time, the ad actually will get seasoned. And what I mean by seasoned is that this ad actually accumulates, if it's good, will accumulate likes, comments, shares. And if you have an ad that's actually getting likes, comments, and shares, uh, that's that's pretty that's a pretty good indica indicator that it's hitting you know the right audience with the right message. And then the beautiful thing that happens when your ad gets seasoned like this is that it actually drives down the cost per click and the click through rate will go up because it's social proof. So when this ad hits someone's feed and they see all of this engagement, hundreds of likes, over a hundred comments, shares, 
they see all this, they see a booming comment section, they actually would click that. They'd be more likely to click that than if this had no social proof. So that's one of the benefits of boiling it down to the top two, other than it just makes sense when you're only getting one or two ads that the average prospect sees anyway. So the most important thing for cold campaign is boil it down to cost per click. And if you see the difference, these have $2 cost per clicks and all these ones that I was kind of going between, they all had similar, but it starts really quickly going up. So if I had all these running, these are getting clicks at three times that rate, uh, $6. So three times what I was currently running, six, 13, 14. So that's uh, seven times higher than the current cost per click that I'm getting. And so, you know, I've run, I've run little tests. I didn't let a ton of money hit a bunch of these because once that one ad, that hero ad started accumulating social proof, it was almost no chance of some of these other ones catching back up. So I actually killed almost all the other ads and just am putting $250 a day behind that one ad. So that's how the basics of how you would optimize uh, LinkedIn cold ads for retargeting. It's a little different because now we're we're focused on not so much what can get the clicks. It's there's certain information that I actually want people to see, uh, and I have a kind of diagram of you know the overall strategy that we talked about, and so it's not necessarily like what would get the lowest click. Um, it's more of there are certain key things that I want them to see, and sure I can play around with different variations of that. And, you know, if it's a main case study that I want all of my website visitors, qualified website visitors to see, sure, I can A, B, C test different formats of that and see what resonates more. But I'm I'm not going to boil down my retargeting, um, my retargeting campaign. I'll show you here. Let's see. Let's go with, where's my normal? here. Oh, okay. It's because I have it ad scheduled. So it's not all just running at once. So here I have all of these different creatives and I actually, let me filter it by status. I actually have a bunch that are running and I'm not going to boil it down to the one or two because, uh, I actually want these to continue to get rotated for them to see different variations. The frequency on this is higher. So I'm actually going to go into this little wheel box here and I'm going to put rotate ads evenly because I don't want LinkedIn to figure out which one's getting the lowest cost per click and then to just put all the ad spend behind that automatically. I actually want my prospects in this campaign to be exposed to all the different varieties of that of those ads. And some of them do get wildly different cost per clicks. So let's see, let's go over here. Uh, cost per click. I guess most of these aren't too terrible. So $6 looks like it's the highest and some of these are getting to two dollars cost per click but i that doesn't really matter to me i want the prospects to get um to get exposed to these different content or these different ads so that's a that's a big important part when you're optimizing for retargeting it's more of the overall strategy of what you want them to see how much it's costing the frequency on these if we look is 13. Uh, so this is uh, let's look at the last 30 days um, because that's probably 30, 90 days, depending on what you have this retargeting group in, uh, 2.7. So they'll see about three ads from this campaign over 90 days, which is probably what most of these little retargeting groups are. They're gonna see about five ads. So you there, you could have a case for boiling it down to the top five ads, but I would probably let, I think I might have five running. Let's look, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> All right, so I would, I guess you could make a case there. If if you're running this as a 90 day retargeting group and you go back and you put 90 days worth of data, oops, and the frequency is five, then I guess logically you should probably be um, boiling this down to your top five. Or if you do want more of the ads from this layer to show, you could just up the daily budget and this frequency would you know slide up to 10 because I think. Uh, right now, as you could see, I don't even have it running in today because I have it taking Mondays off. We're using ad scheduling. So I would, I could either adjust the schedule so it runs more or when it does run, I could up the budget. Uh, let's see how much it's spent. Let's see how much spent this month. So we're nine days in 
this at this campaign groups only spent 193 dollars um the average prospect from this has only seen one one and a half ads so i would say i probably do want this to run a little more or when it does run i want that budget to increase because i want them to see a few more layers of that and your retargeting the optimization of the retargeting layer this isn't gonna all fit in the basics course so i'll probably wrap this up here and you'll you'll just know that the basics of retargeting is that for the cold layer you're going to optimize for the lowest cost per click uh, the highest click through rate usually and then for retargeting it's gonna be a little more iffy uh, because you want to look at things like the frequency of each campaign um, and the frequency of each campaign type depending on the the ad formats or whatever is going to be different in your budget so you're going to look at that and, and decide what to optimize that down to how many ads you're going to run and what's most important and sometimes it's not necessarily that this ad has the lowest cost per click it's that this one is a touch point leading to an actual conversion and so that, that gets a little more messy so those are the basics of just some things you can think about and i'll leave you with that